Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Stefan. I'm from Vienna. And I'm using Touch Designer uh, only since two years, actually. That's when I did my first project. But I've been using similar software since like over 10 years. Um, and that's also a bit part of this, this whole talk because I've been implementing like solutions that I used uh, uh, on different systems and, and created a whole working path to solve problems that are not so easy to make directly f with Quartz, uh, with Touch Designer. So I, I started to do a lot of Quartz Composer before on the Macintosh. Um, yeah, I'm part uh, and the founder of the visual artist collective uh, Neon Golden. So this is Neon Golden. And this is one side of the stuff we are doing. Like we also have a design company. And uh, on the other side, we do artistic projects uh, in the media art sphere. And just to get a bit of an overview. And what we are focusing today is something that we are doing since yeah, a couple of years now, almost 10 years, uh, using uh, like software to control lights. Yeah? And I would like to take you a bit uh, onto a journey, like uh, how we moved from uh, doing video, like I, I was doing a lot of uh, generative visuals, like in nightclubs. And we started to get more and more interested into light and how to control light with the same setup. And what you get today from me is kind of the, the resume and, and the insights from the last, uh, from the past 10 years, uh, how to create stuff and where the problems are and how to, to make something at the end. Yeah. So, and first I would like just to show you uh, the uh, we, we made a lot of documentations, the short videos. Uh, just always the videos and I, I, I tell you something and then you see a bit how we progressed and, and I will also give you some hints uh, how we did it and then uh, we, we make uh, small setups and, and try to control it ourselves. Yeah. So. So the starting point from us was at the end of our like uh, life wish will career or what, what we did at that time around 2010. We've been doing like big stages, uh, designing the stages and also uh, having like 400 square meters of LED to, to play on and developing setups for that. Yeah, you can switch it off if you want completely as well. So, and Already there, we learned some stuff that uh, if you use LEDs, it's different to a projector. You have a, a matrix, you have a, a single LEDs, and it's, it's much more beautiful to, to really point on a single LED. If you just stretch a video on an LED wall, maybe some of you did already, then you get like anti-aliasing effects and it's just not nice. You have no sharp lines and, and so on. And and so the first step was uh, we created like a shader in GLSL and shading language where we uh, generated the content directly in the graphics card. And this is what came out, for example. Maybe I need some sound as well. So. So. Mm -hmm. so. No music. Huh? Still no music.
Virtual Network, that's great. Just wait a bit. Let me put down the quality of it. Sorry, it's a bit annoying. So. So. What we really liked was uh, that we had control over the whole stage and also that we had control over the whole lights, not just the video content. And how we solved it here was, uh, as I said before, with the shader. That means we had these uh, pixelated numbers, little textures. And we created kind of a translation script that uh, we could play any visuals inside. And this was translated like a gradient map, for example. And it was like an ASCII uh, converter. Like we, we ordered the number. A, po a point was like a, a very dark grayish value. Uh, and uh, an 8 was, uh, was a very uh, bright value. And so we translated the pixel values. So I'll stop this nothing I want to show. Uh, and so we translated uh, the pixel, the, the, the gray values or the color values, in, into uh, a matrix of, of digits. So this is <coughs> kind of the starting point. And from from there, uh, so from there, let's go. What's the next one? From there, we got. Uh, a client that asked us to do uh, an installation for them, and uh, let's just keep joining. So we had at that time we had one guy in our crew that was a light technician, and he helped us a bit to get into this whole topic because we never worked with with like uh, hardware controlled lights besides screens. And so. Let's let it load a bit and I explain. So what the, t the goal here was like, the, it was Heineken and they had like uh, special beer crates that had uh, like empty holes on the sides. So we uh, bought cheap LED modules at the time, it was 2010, and <coughs> used also uh, small DMX boards, uh, but uh, and wired everything on our own and controlled it then with, with a really light desk that was connected with a computer, where we put the content into the light desk. So it was a very expensive setup, to say so, because a, a, a good light desk costs a couple of thousand euros, and so it's very hardware intense to build such an installation. Mm. Yeah. This doesn't make so much sense. It's the same with the network. Maybe because everybody is downloading at the same time as well. Yes. So. Yeah. All right, move to the mobile phone connection. So. so. Mm. Mm. 
let's see if it's quicker over the phone. Uh huh. This led us uh, <coughs> to uh, buy meters of cables and uh, start to solder for one week, and <coughs> yeah, and s and set this up and, and learn how how to create this, this kind of a basic setup. And we used here this is something I show you online a bit later uh, boards from DMX for All. That's it's a small company doing custom DMX boards where you can just plug di uh, uh, LEDs directly onto the DMX. Uh, set up. So, <coughs> so. so we use this this kind of things then a couple of more times, creating a creating a bit more funny experiences. So we also had some lead bars from, from other productions left over. <laughs> and created this kind of uh, hacky setups uh, that have been quite innovative at that time. It's Gesaffelstein, before he was famous. So, the next one. So, um, shortly after, uh, shortly after that, uh, a new club in Vienna opened. And they asked us uh, first uh, to take. Uh, they asked us to take over the whole uh, lighting design, and, and also they wanted to have projections. But it was the case uh, the the room was not really high, so we decided just uh, create light installation instead of projections. And here we started to use. Uh, we use the same controlling boards, but in in much bigger arrays. And I also had to deal with uh, more complicated problems. I show you first project. Um, so. So here we wired about 320 one meter LED uh, strips in, in profiles and arranged them also like in a, in, in, a, in, in, a, in kind of a hexagonal network. And with the first projects we saw uh, before, uh, it was kind of simple in, in the terms of how to set it up or it, 
with, with, the, with, the, with the Heineken, in the Heineken case, uh, we use a lighting desk, as I said before, to map the pixels that, that we can put the content where it has to be. For the, for the cross, it was not that important at the end, it has just to look nice. But here we had the, had the challenge uh, that we wanted to address, uh, uh, for example, we wanted to run a wave through the whole club. So we had to, to find a way that something that's not in a regular grid to address all these points. Uh, and and uh, so we had, like at that time, we still used Quartz Composer. And we had to write the custom software uh, <coughs> to do all the mapping at the end. So, and there was a second installation as well. So where we the first time tried out to use different uh, fixtures. Here you see a controlling unit, and what we used here uh, was like uh, uh, cold cathode uh, tubes. They are just four millimeter thin and work like neon tubes. It's it's uh, they're filled with gas, like different gases. That's why we had different colors. And uh, you also need a special uh, little units. These are these ones. They are called in inverters to generate the power they need because they don't work on on, on uh, low voltage, they need uh, 2,000 volts or something to drive them. So we had uh, to think about this. And and it's actually it's uh, RGB and white because there was a special uh, wallpaper that was uh, CMYK and when we changed the color it also changed uh, like it was overprinted in uh, different motifs on, on, on in CMYK and if you use RGB colors then you you see it in the video now then you see different things on the walls as well seven years ago, and if it happens that you come to Vienna and visit the club, it's the, I would say the best club and the <coughs> biggest club in Vienna, uh, the still the installation is still there and still running. Like it was supposed actually to make, the, to just to stay for one year or then we take more budget, make a bigger installation, but everybody liked it and it's actually, it just still works, <laughs> so there was never a need to change it. So. Um, so this was basically the first fixed installation we made. And then uh, the next year, or not the next year, but soon later, uh, we get some requests uh, for bigger scale projects. And we also did already bigger scale projects with projections before, but never with, with big light installations. Um, one of them was a Kranensee. It was like a, kran a ballet of cranes uh, in Vienna. It was about 45 cranes. And we played uh, lights on 15 of them. There have been 15,000 people. So nobody imagined that so many people would come to the show. And I will play the making of for you. A bit further. So, let's see. So, lights is, it's, a, it's a huge, it's, a, it's a one, of the, one of the biggest building sites in Vienna because they built kind of a new city next to Vienna. Uh, and 
The biggest challenge was at that time, if you have like two meters of, like two kilometers of installation, like this is how, how big this field was. So somehow you have to, to uh, control these lights. And uh, one possibility would have been like to do it wirelessly, to send all the sig signals over, over the air. But at that time, uh, there was Sochi and all the big companies providing these kind of systems have been in Russia. So happily we found uh, a technic company that said like they will do it with wires and we have to say uh, we had to set it, set it up in one day because they have been working all the time on, on, the, whole, on the whole site. Uh, but they managed to, to set up like it was a, ma a massive amount. I, I calculated one time it was kilometers like on cables, they run through. We also invited um, a young accompanist, and we had musicians from uh, from the good orchestras in Vienna. They played for us the whole piece. But there's, like if, if you make uh, an installation in this, in, in, the, in this scale, you can imagine it, but like how do you progr program something in advance that takes 20 minutes when you don't have time like, to play it live uh, and, and explore how it works? So we had to create a simulator. That's also something I will show you a bit later. Here we will see a little uh, one shot, we see a bit of it. So we used Cinema 4D as a simulator, just created like the the 3D model of the cranes and the building site, and then uh, pushed, uh, I don't know which protocol we used, but we pushed like, I think, OSC live, live signals from the score into, into cinema to visualize how the cranes are illuminated. So. So, so, actually, this is—it's uh, not totally true. But said we first, we first made the whole. We, like we had the problem first, how to make a score in which program, which program should we use, like to create the whole animation for for the thing, and that we can see it. So in this time, uh, we created also the whole ins uh, the whole animation part in Cinema 4D in the animation panel. We could do this. Nowadays, easily in such designer, but at that time we didn't use it. So uh, we use cinema for it. This is at the end what we saw, like the, the whole production time, our simulation, and happily it worked then when we just plugged it to the real system.
the whole piece is online if somebody is interested to see it. So, um, and, and here we learn a lot about planning because you have to really plan every little step in advance that it works at the end. Um, so, and also in the same year we did another installation. Uh, it was called Swarm. And the idea, so I just let it run and let it talk besides, so. Maybe so. Come on. So the, the idea behind this installation was we had a, we had a black room, a complete black chamber. And imagine that you have a, you throw a point cloud uh, just into an empty space. That's what we did basically with, uh, by programming. And then uh, we segmented the whole space and uh, created like uh, wired single LEDs on wires and, and hung them uh, three dimensionally in the space. They had different heights. And as we knew like exactly where the position in space is, we could like move any 3D uh, objects through the whole uh, space. For example, it was called swarms. So like like a, a swarm, a creature was like flying through this space, and we had some sensors inside that people have been interacting with. So and, and here we had like about 15 students that just have been wiring for two weeks. But the thing is, like nobody of them knew about electronics, and we had to show them really little steps. Like the only way, like a lot of installations we do, we need a lot of uh, crowd to help us at the end. And so you have to, to really think about stupid little steps that everybody can follow that they don't produce uh, crap at the end. And, and uh, it really worked like a charm. We had, of course, some, some little failures inside, but the most uh, things just worked out of the box. This was one module. Yeah. So wait, stop. So this is a little DMX board, uh, something similar that we see here as well later. But, uh, and, and all these single LEDs, every, every LED was connected to one uh, output. <coughs> Today I would, I would solve this totally different. That's what I brought to you. That's where we are heading to, because now we can make everything so much cheaper, easier, and <laughs> with less workforce. So one of the biggest problems we also had was, uh, this was a big mistake of us. Like they said, like, you yeah, do the whole installation. Like we said first, like, you have to, to, to make the mount for us. And they said, nah, you have to make everything. But it was an old building, so we started to, to, to uh, put the wires and the whole uh, walls uh, came down. So it was almost not possible to, to just mount the whole thing on the ceiling. We had three architects in the team and they just have been standing there, oh, I don't know what to do. And Rafi, one is of our technicians, uh, he was working also on construction as an electrician. And he said, like, I just like to take these big uh, metal things and push them in the wall and glue them. And this really worked. It was like one day before show. Uh, we just managed to hang it. Okay, this was much better in reality, actually. So, but sometimes really hard to, to even document these things. So, so. so. <coughs> During the installation, we invited a friend of us, a dancer, and we made uh, 
a piece inside where we controlled the whole installation with a, a PlayStation controller. So somebody was dancing the swarm in real time and the dancer was also improvising at the same time. Skip this. So, so let's skip a bit. So, um, yeah, maybe this one is interesting. So, this is the first project then uh, where we started. Like, something changed over the time as well. Uh, First, just LEDs have been like affordable where you have just one strip in, in one color that you can control. And at one point, the strips came out where we can control every, every pixel on a strip, like on these ones, for example. And for those ones, uh, if, you, if you use the DMX protocol, the standard lighting protocol, this works for a couple of pixels. But as soon as you have like a big amount of pixels, it gets like uh, a cabling orgy, or even if you use ArtNet, like the data volume is, is really high on the network. It's just not possible to, <coughs> to send like this kind of big amount of data uh, with, with uh, simple setups, let's say like this. Because if you have a lot of money, you can, you can always build like uh, with a big amount of hardware uh, solutions that work. Uh, and then we came across to a Kickstarter project that I ordered. Uh, it's called Pixel Pusher. And this is the little guy like that I want to, to show you actually and how to use it because it's a bit tricky but the thing about it is uh, you can drive with, with this board it's about hundred twenty dollars you can uh, drive uh, 300 uh, 3840 pixels and that's a, a major change of possibilities you have so and this was the first project we, where we tried it out. This was a, a project for us. Like we had, the crew was like existing for um, 10 years. So we made a little birthday present for us and, and created an installation. <coughs> we also learned something else. Uh, like the most installations we built before, uh, they have been really hard like to, to set it up again. You don't find somebody that is, like if you find somebody to make it one time, that's nice. But mostly then, uh, uh, nobody else wants to pay again that you can earn something with these kind of projects. So in this kind, we thought like, let's make something that is modular, that is simple, that we can just, uh, that it's a club again, but on the backside you see the new models that we installed for that event. Uh, and you see also that, that you can really play directly on the pixels and use them kind of as a video screen. But you also have, again, the problem that we had here uh, already before. You have to find, you have to create kind of a mapping. Uh, otherwise, otherwise, of course, the LEDs are just a line, then it's kind of random what's happening at the end. And you want, you ha want to have full control over the, over the pixels. So, and yeah, and then there uh, a new club or a new club, an old club, but a new club uh, 
reopened as a new club, Prata Sauna, it's the second, second big club in Vienna. And here we did uh, also the light installations. And here we used first time the technology uh, uh, in a big style. And also added one more level of complexity again. No, that's the wrong one. Ha. Okay. Mm -hmm. ah, so. Especially in the main floor, I stop the video then. Yeah. So we use these LEDs as well for these uh, copper trees. This is kind of the main floor, and here we had the idea uh, to have like these uh, LEDs in three dimensions. First, we had it like running like uh, in the length through the room. Then we had to had run it on on the other side, and then we wanted to have it like uh, sticking through the ceiling on from the inside in. And here we have to think about like these uh, different layers how. Uh, because you want to separate these layers and you also would also like to, to run animations uh, through the whole space, like from left to right, from top to down, and all these things. And also, uh, I will talk a bit later about this, uh, how, how to make this, how to organize these kind of things. So, let's keep this as well, <coughs> that we have a bit more time later. So, yeah. With the same uh, technology, like using these light controls, you cannot just uh, control lights, you also can control lasers. Uh, you cannot control lasers in a way uh, that you draw exactly with the laser, but uh, there are laser, uh, uh, laser uh, projectors around. They have also a DMX interface. So to, if you have pre-programmed settings that you just control them like a lighting uh, fixture. And that's what we used here. So we had 10 lasers and we had 30 mirrors. And all the lasers uh, have been able like to have, yeah, just running. Uh, Second installation as well, but uh, all these lasers had uh, the like uh, had this kind of uh, uh, I don't know in English uh, mm -hmm. like this, uh, lines going out from one point, and uh, the only setting we, we had to do before uh, in in, uh, uh, in in the DMX was that they have the possibility to save some positions to send it out, and then we triggered all these positions uh, with the lighting protocol. That was kind of really simple to set up and program in one day, basically. Yeah, so skip, skip, skip. So next one. So. And so. so. But normal LED started to bore us uh, at one point as well because we did so many projects with that. Then we thought about like using like uh, neon tubes. Uh, of course, we like you can control, control normal neon tubes as well. But in this case, we decided to use LED uh, 
tubes that look like neon tubes because they are much quicker to switch. And and there are uh, light controllers that you can control with DMX, where you just have like a, 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 a normal power plug. So you can put anything into this plug to control that with, with the light protocol. For example, uh, a simple fan, like just to make wind as an effect. quicker here as well. So if, if somebody's interested, you can have all the, the notes from me and, and the links to, to have a look in deep. Um, so and here, we, <coughs> here we pick just one and jump into that one. So. But as we gained a lot of experience uh, with the LEDs, we started uh, to create our own uh, modules. I brought some uh, for you. Uh, we just bought, like uh, in China, the, the strips and prepared it as a system that we can plug in as, as we want, or also more than one, uh, one strip. Like we can also uh, put uh, more than one in a line. And And you're quite flexible to, to set up interesting uh, things. Who of you works with light so far? Yes. Not so many, some, yeah. What did you use mostly? DMX or DMX, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then let's start to talk a bit how to make it. So, let's go away. So then le let's start really with the basics, yeah? again. <coughs> so what is, a light, what is a light fixture that you can, that you can address? Yeah? There, are, there are different types. Uh, the most simple ones, the DMX ones, are like simple spots, maybe an analog spot that has just a bulb inside. And either it has a DMX input, as I said before, and DMX input is like, uh, can also maybe run it through. Everyone sees this is DMX cable. It's a light cable. It's full cool connection. It's it's good uh, it, because it's not uh, disconnecting from uh, from itself. It's made for real for event stuff. And the next the next bigger type is basically the what, what's what's really common. That's what I brought to you for you as well. Two of them are. RGB spots. That means they have more than one channel. Imagine like you have uh, you have uh, you have to send a value. It's uh, the sim most simple ones are just on and off. This is the thing you can send. Uh, as soon as you have something that has a dimmer inside, that's a switcher. As soon as you have a, a dimmer inside or a RGB LED, you need something like a dimmer. So you have to send like the the red channel uh, some value from zero to uh, 255 fits uh, in, in DMX. This is the, 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 it's eight bits. It's, the, it's the, the different values you can give them. If you give the half, it's, it's like, uh, it's half bright at the end. If it's zero, it's black, and uh, if it's 255, it's full. And if you want to, uh, to mix uh, the colors, you have to send three channels and mix it, like on every pixel you know from a screen. Yeah. Of course, there are, uh, more complicated lights or fixtures around. 
Uh, for example, a strobe. A strobe is uh, they are very different to con uh, also there are different types of strobes to control. They are not just on off. That's what you might imagine. They have often inside a clock how quick it strobes or, uh, and so on. And so you have to uh, just you have more channels, maybe seven channels, and then you have to have a look at the manual what to send exactly. Like uh, one is for the tempo, for example, and whatever feature it has. Or also you have an LED bar that we saw in the video as well. Maybe you have uh, eight kind of, uh, of these spots uh, attached to one uh, ready-made fixture. So then you have also to, to con uh, consultate uh, the manual, manual and have a look. Of course, then you don't need like, then often you have different modes on the lights that maybe you can, can set up the bar that, every, that all these eight lights are uh, going in sync. That means you need three channels if you have an RGB uh, bar. Or uh, if you want to control every uh, unit of the, of the uh, LED bar uh, differently, then of course, if you have eight, then you have three times eight, you need uh, 24 channels. And the first one starts. Uh, the first channels, uh, channel is R, the second uh, uh, is uh, green, the, the third one is blue, and then uh, the fourth one is again the red one from the next light. That's, that's how you send the data. You just stack up one light after the other. Yeah. Um, moving heads uh, are also a special case because they are not just able to... Uh, uh, to have uh, a color, they also like and move in the space. So you have more axes, and for every axis, you also have an, another channel, and maybe they have other features like the shutter or softness or whatever. So that's something you have to keep in mind if you if you design the setup, uh, how to make it. And there are other devices, a lot of other devices, for example, motors, <coughs> or for example, motors that have lights as well, or you can put fans or any, any other electrical device, basically, uh, to it. And if you use this kind of uh, custom boards, uh, then you can design whatever you want on top of it. Yeah, so. To control light, there are different ways. There are different ways or different protocols. The, the oldest one or the, uh, the, the, the standard one is DMX. And DMX is hardware based. That's what we saw on the cable before. You really cable all the devices. And on one chain, on one cable, you cannot just put one uh, uh, fixture. You can also put like uh, a lot of them behind. Just go into one device and in the input and from the output to the next one you build up your own chains yeah the only thing you have to ha uh, you have to have in mind is that uh, in one like from the address space that you have you can maxi <coughs> maximum consume uh, 512 channels that means if you have RGB lights you have to divide it by three that's the maximum uh, spots you could put into one chain um, to make this, you need uh, something that a uh, computer is talking to the hardware system. This is called uh, a node. I brought to you one node, and somebody can try it later themselves. Um, so it's just a little, I don't know if you see it, it's just a little box at the end. Uh, there are different types. Uh, the most easy to use is the USB one and you also have to make sure before you just go and buy one you have to make sure uh, which one is compatible with such a designer or your computer. Uh, NTech uh, is pretty nice to use and works almost everywhere. So, okay, just go through it and we plug it later. Um, Okay, this is what you need. You need something to connect the computer to this hardware system. And, uh, yeah, this power control. <coughs> the, so, this is one thing. The problem is, this one node 
is only one universe. That means if I want to make a bigger setup, I need either more nodes, or there are also nodes that have more than one uh, outputs, maybe four universes. But if you start to, to think about, that's what we had like years ago, we want to create bigger setups, then you think about, oh, I need like uh, six universes, then it starts to get very expensive, the whole thing. Because like the, the more professional ones that have like 12 universes or something, they are really pricey. So, because there are a lot of limitations in DMX and it's very old, uh, there's another old protocol that they invited years ago, it's called ArtNet. And ArtNet, uh, because they figure out it's, it's a bit stupid to run all the wires all the time, um, it would make more sense to use uh, normal network cables, Ethernet, to run DMX over it. That's a great idea, and it works pretty well. Um, and so you can have, with, uh, in, within one ArtNet, you can have uh, 32,000 DMX universes. So there's a lot more. Each of these universes have, again, the same limitations than uh, the standard DMX protocols. Yeah. And what do we need to control, uh, control ArtNet at the end? We need an ArtNet, ArtNet to DMX uh, node. That means we start from Ethernet on the computer, normal Ethernet cable, and then you have, uh, in this case, a bigger one that has four universes. And with this one, it has also an input actually, with this one it can run uh, four DMX universes. So far so good. The cool thing about it is uh, these are the end nodes and you also still need the end nodes. You will not get around these. That's the same with the USB. But the advantage of the whole thing is this. Like if I have a big event space, for example, then I can run like uh, just the main lines, everything with Ethernet and where I need at the end the, the outlets, there I put a node. So I don't have to run like, uh, imagine like you have all the universe, all, the, all these uh, splitters and, and universes here, and then I have to run kilometers of cables uh, everywhere. For every universe, I have to run the whole cable. And here, I just put one, like if, 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 if I need them 50 meters away from my computer, I just run one Ethernet cable there, and from there I distribute the whole things. Yeah. So you can use just standard uh, network technology that you would use with computers. Just at the end, you also need a node because uh, they are controlled with uh, uh, seven volts. So they, this will, uh, and, and a certain frequency, and this is, is made uh, with these output nodes always. Yeah? Um, ArtNet is, is sometimes also a bit tricky and uh, bitchy. And <coughs> so they invited uh, in, in yeah, net invite. The, so they, they uh, came up with a new solution. It's a new solution that is also in the new versions of Touch Designer. I never used it actually, because you also need the hardware for it. It's called uh, SACN. It's a streaming architecture for uh, control networks. It's kind of the better ArtNet. Yeah, because one thing is like the ArtNet, you have to know about network uh, setups and send to the right address, or if you send broadcast. There is, there is a lot of things to consider, and it's sometimes, I just tried to, to set it quickly up with touch designer, this one, and uh, didn't work out of the box. So it, it will, will take a bit time to fix it and send it to the right address and everything. With SACN, if you have the chance to use that one, you have, first you have more uh, universes because uh, it's, the packing is differently and it is more intelligent. And, and also, it's, it's, uh, what, what I read about it, it's, it's much uh, more simple to set it up. So I found a very short video that explains uh, the difference a bit. So. Technology moves forward, 
The what? The file? Yes, I can send it to everybody. Yes, that's why I wrote it in the text file. I can just send it to you. <laughs> Maybe you just send me an email. Everybody sends me an email. Uh, I will send you the file. Let's make it like just this. Write email the yeah, I will put it back on, on at the end. So, but there I compiled the, the links and the stuff. You don't hear anything, right? No. Yeah. So you have a look at the video on your own. It's it's a nice little explanation about mm -hmm. three minutes uh, with the differences of DMX, Ardent, S, ACM. Okay. So the basics I, I told you already. <laughs> so also like we don't have too much time. So okay, let's go to the next one. Um, so nowadays, that's what I showed you in the later projects as well. This is all <coughs> nice, but if you come from a feel like touch designer and where you have control over all the pixels and all these kind of things and use to control videos, then uh, it's of course uh, tempting and interesting to use like LEDs where you can control like your own every pixel and map them properly and whatever, yeah? So, but here we, we enter another world because this stuff till SACM, this is event style uh, things, yeah? They are made like for these light technicians that run around and put the cables and they have their uh, compiled hardware, that's perfect, this works for them, yeah? But uh, I think the most of you are like me artists and, and want to create like special things, not just uh, standard uh, lighting fixtures that everybody can do as uh, under, uh, uh, everybody else can do. And so that's uh, the step uh, where I want to give you the, the, the starting point for your own stuff. Then we have to make have to use something different. We have to use the LED products, and they have different. Uh, there's a bus system that is like they have driver chips on, like they're uh, sorry they're built in, so we cannot show it to you. But imagine you have like an LED, and then you have a little chip on 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 the on the on the strip that is addressing like one or or three uh, pixels or whatever, and they are chained up, and depending on which protocol uh, these. Uh, chips are using, um, you can have like 10 meters of, of strips like with, with every centimeter uh, LED for example, so you can drive up a massive amount of LEDs. It's a bit different, like all of these, uh, these uh, chips are a bit different and something else that is interesting to know, if you, like, if you buy the stuff here, uh, you get the same stuff than in China, just somebody else imported it and, and put a lot of uh, money on top of it before he sells it to you. Yeah? And, uh, if you buy it directly there, uh, you get the same things, much cheaper. But uh, the, tr the tricky part is this, the Chinese are not always so accurate if they do something. So it happens that the RGB channels are changed or something else. So we had to, so you have to set these strips up. That's the conclusion of the whole thing. Like it's not just you put this one and then you get another charge and okay, red is green, why not? Okay, then you have to set up all the strips that it works. So you have to configure the whole thing. Yeah. Um, I like to use this chip a lot. It's an old one. It's an old one, but it's very stable. Yeah? There are other ones, uh, like all of them work at the end. Yeah? But like if, if you see it here, this uh, VS2801 uh, uh, is a nice one. Uh, it's an old, also an old one. If you see then they, they made like special versions, like with the 11. Uh, they should be better, but uh, we had so many problems with, with, with kind of newer, better LED chips because just, they just didn't work uh, as expected or they had power drops and, and other things. Yeah. So, something else, so something else to say with these LED products, that's maybe something interesting as well. Uh, how, many do, uh, how, how many of you do know about electronics a bit? Like, yeah? You can, you can drive these chips like in this low voltage area from 5 volts to 24 volts. What is better? Yeah. Hmm? 24. Yeah, 24 is better. That's something we had to learn because we are not from the electronics uh, <laughs> side of things. So we learned everything on our own and just did Arduino stuff and whatever. But uh, yeah, the higher the voltage th that you use, 
the further you can go with the LEDs. So otherwise you have to put the amps up uh, and get crazy. But also if you put just the amps up, it's also not uh, like, it's just go for 24. It's a bit, it's, it's more expensive. It's a bit more expensive, but it's less hassle. Okay, we made all the installations with five volts, and I know from what I'm talking, yeah? But with the next stuff, we will also move uh, to 12 or 24, yeah? It's just, imagine just you have more power. You have just more power to send it. Like if you have short strips, no problem. But if you have this five volt technology, after four meters, like it starts to drop and then it's getting darker at the end and whatever. Depends what you're making. It's really depending on what you're making. But if, if you want to have like, a, like if you want to use a pixel pusher to its fullest limit with all the pixels and whatever and ch not inject the power everywhere and, and, and so on, just go with higher voltage. Makes life easier. Yeah. And yeah, what we need, there are also different ones meanwhile on the market. Uh, friends recommended me another one. I, I forgot the name, should be better even uh, than the pixel pusher, but I never tried it. And with pixel pusher, uh, yeah, we have we have some experience meanwhile, and and learned also some stuff. That's what we set up next. Um, but to get it running with just the documentation was uh, was also not such a, a easy mission at the end. Yeah, um, and I I will walk you through the steps that you that you know. <laughs> uh, a feature that I never used so far, but are really like to use and, and think about is uh, you cannot just put uh, here uh, eight channels uh, of LEDs strips on it you can also put eight motors on it because you have four pins it works like a servo driver so you can imagine uh, if you're from Berlin you know the white void stuff with the, with the, with the winches and the LEDs moving up and down this is easy to reproduce of course you have to build some hardware but to control it, you can control eight motors with this. And of course, you have to build your winch and the power supply and whatever. But imagine if you use two channels of these, you can have four. You can control like a lot of LEDs and the winch and the whole thing. So you can build these kind of setups that are too expensive to buy or rent if you have the time. Uh, you, can, you can also buy them on your own. Yeah? Okay. So let's... So... So a little roundup here. So I talked before about uh, DMX nodes and stuff. So I like to recommend you like two companies or two things. Uh, we worked really good with this. Was one is Entech. They started kind of as a half open source kind of thing as well, but they grew a lot over the last years. And uh, yeah. They have also a lot of stuff meanwhile. So, but if you wanna just starting point, if you get one of, of these, uh, this, the newer ones, the better ones, like if you get one of these, of these nodes, they will really work out of the box. You don't have to think about anything, just plug it to touch designer and you're on. You can, ready to go, and it works for a lot of projects. Yeah. So you also see the prices, it's feasible to make something. Yeah, okay. Yeah, or you go with, with a little board. You don't need more than this, like a little chip. Uh, you can also, actually, you can also build stuff like this with Arduino and, and other things. But I would go with a ready-made uh, unit because it's tested and you also ha don't have the driver problems and it's supported. So, if you, if you want to stick with standard. And so for the pixel pusher, one more thing to say. There is also a possibility, if you know Raspberry Pi, the ones who heard about it or used it, there is a project on Raspberry Pi where you can install the same kind of software than Pixel Pusher, so you can also use a Raspberry Pi and build your own small lighting projects. We did it, for example, for things where uh, we just want to have a standalone lighting solution with no computer attached. Okay, so, and the second one that's kind of interesting, that's something we use a lot, actually. And this <coughs> tip we got from our, from our light technician, because we had no clue about all this. DMX was really strange for us. Uh, uh, no, DMX for, uh, DMX for 
oh.d. It's a German company, not a great website, but <laughs> cool products, really cool products, because what, the, what they offer you is uh, yeah, just go, ah. yeah, whatever. You can get these kind of boards. That's what we used in our in like the, the first half uh, of our experience. <coughs> we just got these boards, and there are also ones where you can put the mix, and then you have uh, enough power, like enough uh, power on it that you can use a motor attached to it. This is the one one solution that you go with these DMX uh, things, and they also provide. If you want to skip the DMX itself and say I want to just go with the with the Ethernet cables and whatever, you can go with the Artnet things here. Yeah, it's it's worth to check out. Uh, also, we had some we had some stuff that uh, we burned some chips and stuff. We sent it back and they replaced the chips for us. It was very cheap. Just yeah, because they are making everything on their own, and it's it's not so expensive. So so now the pixel pusher. Let's go to the pixel pusher. So as I said, the, the pixel, this is how it looks like. And also, maybe you can also give one screw it a little bit and look at it. So this is the pixel pusher. <coughs> so we plug, we plug it together. Um, the downside of, of the pixel pusher or of any of these units or even just wait a minute. If you want to communicate to such a board or such a device, it has nothing to do with ArtNet at the end. It's, it's some, like you, pl you plug in a network cable, but you, you have to send some data that it can work with. Yeah? And even if it's open source, I, mean, I do a lot of programming, but I'm not in this hardware-based programming things. I use Python and high-level things and create graphics. But I'm, I'm, I'm not interested in, in developing protocols, because there would, would be, of course, a way to, to create a DLL for uh, like an extension for touch designer or node and directly interface with something like touch, uh, with something like pixel pusher. But then you have to be on the hardware side and really uh, programming on the core. That's that's not my business. So I was uh, I was uh, thinking about how how can how can we use it and and now I have to go shortly back to our story uh, because I said I used a lot of quartz composer. I don't know how many uh, know that. It's similar to touch designer. It's much older but it has also fat nodes like, that have a lot of complexity in it, and you can build up uh, interactive systems with that. And we also had, like somebody made a plugin for a DMX and ArtNet protocol, uh, but uh, we had the same problems. You have something bigger to drive, like uh, you get crazy to, to make it with, with these kind of uh, nodes. So for the Gorilla for Relic project, uh, also we had this mapping issue. So if you start to, to set up the, the whole mapping thing, in touch design here is easier, you can do this now. But uh, at that time it was also not so easy. So we had to, uh, we created the C++ application uh, where we had a kind of a mapper. So we had like, uh, we could move the fixtures around in 2D space. And what we used, uh, Quartz Composer, or Actually, we do the same now, still again with, with Touch Designer, but we use this kind of uh, software is to create the content, yeah? to create like the animations and drive all these things. But the, the mapping itself, we did at that time uh, in an external program that was running on the site and, and sending it out quickly, because this was also a thing, uh, it was always too slow. And later, uh, you know, probably also Mad Mapper, some of you, if you do, uh, if you work with mapping. Uh, later they came out also with the, like, we got the idea as actually also from the sending it to another application from, uh, from this, uh, like, the, on, a, on a Mac site, and I'm normally a Mac user, we had, we have since about 10 years, we have the Siphon. Siphon is, you know Siphon or, or something similar or Spout? It's, uh, imagine the following for the ones that don't know. Uh, 
you have two applications and you want to send one movie, picture, whatever, to the other application. And there are ways to send it or save it on a, on, 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 on a disk and read it again, whatever. Everything takes a lot of time if you are real time. And one guy, uh, Wade, he's also from the Quartz Composer community, he came up with this great idea. If you send the texture anyways to the graphics card, you just mark the, the area where the texture is and just send the address to the other program. And the other program just grabs it and just takes the GPU, grabs the picture, and this is like uh, almost <coughs> instant. It takes a little bit of processing time, but almost nothing. And uh, based on this feature, uh, all the Mac, all the Mac VJ software was able then to, to share all these uh, things like, okay, the mapping is better than MadMapper, so we create the content in Quartz Composer, but use it there, and Bitvox, whatever. It used just cross like sometimes to three applications. That was really nice because you just use the best of every program and then you create the setup. And in Windows nowadays you have it as well. There's one is Wi-Fi, but this it was not that great. And then there's Spout. Spout is also integrated in Touch Designer. And there we have the same features and send it to the next application. So let's go back to the touch uh, to the, the pixel pusher issue before we do it. Um, they created uh, as as an open source thing, they use Java. I don't like Java so much, but okay, you can it, it's okay from the speed and, and you can use processing. If you know processing to, to code with it, then it's kind of okay. But it's it's never great, and if it crashes, it's it's uh, yeah, it crashes a lot, and and then you have to reboot your computer <laughs> and and these kind of things. It's it's not so awesome at the end. So, and so the the first thing uh, to send something to them. So they they also uh, saw the problem that it's not so cool. Uh, like if you just can use processing in Java, and all the other applications cannot use it. So what they did. Uh, they offered an ArtNet bridge. I put it in this uh, please copy folder for everybody if you, because you don't find it so easily in the internet, uh, somewhere around. What they did is a Java program that understands ArtNet, so you can use any program or the touch designer to send ArtNet out. And then this bridge takes it and uh, greatly pushes it to the pixel pusher. So we made our first installation uh, for a commercial client with it uh, in for Red Bull in Salzburg in a flagship store, just 100 LEDs, just 100 about, yeah? Three picture posters, like it was, everything was like uh, more than enough hardware there. But uh, the whole process of just getting this couple of pixels and sending there was very slow. Like it just worked for this, but when we started to think about scaling, like we wanted to use the same technology for, for the Prata sauna, just didn't work, it didn't work at all. It lost like five frames or something, and you cannot use this in, in a nightclub, it's just not working. So then I, I was thinking about like what, what we did before, like how did we solve this problem like in the Mac world, and then sort of like, yeah, why not uh, just use what, what's really working in Java from them is the sending out is okay, but the, everything else is not okay. So I just, I just made a simple, uh, a simple program where, uh, so maybe just install it together now, just make the step together, that, that you see this, and then, so if we open processing, so, um, oh, where is it, so, so you, ha you have here sketch, a library, import library, so mine is German because I cannot, so. Okay, import library, and then you have to install two libraries at the end. One is Spout. I installed it already. So, but this is the one you need. And the second one is Pixel Pusher. So this is the only thing you need. If you have a Mac, you need Siphon. And Pixel Pusher, of course. Hmm? Sorry? Where is this? Here, it's here. Sketch, import library. Yeah. So. 
So, so we would need two more hours to get deeper in the whole thing. So, uh, okay. And if you have installed it, let's make a first, let's open TouchSide, let's make simple tests that you see what's working and how it's working. So. Hmm? No, just in, no, no, the libraries you install from here, just from the internet. It's just connecting and installing. Nobody has it. Like this, this one, ha. Huh, you can copy it from somebody else. Then you have just to look and, and install it at home. <laughs> Sorry, like time is running away. Otherwise, cannot fix it for everyone. <coughs> you know. So, um, and let's make this little spout test. Yeah, and there is uh, Beispiele or examples in English, examples, and then you have uh, contributed libraries, and here you have spout, and you just go for spout receiver. Yeah. Just hit run. So, mine is pink, yours not. So you open touch designer, and then you can take any video, but I just made a constant. Sorry, I didn't hear it. <coughs> the example is yeah. the example is here. File, yeah. examples, and then contributed libraries. And here you have spout for processing. And here you have a spout receiver. For Mac, you have Siphon, Siphon receiver, or si I, I don't, I, I cannot. Who has a Mac? I will come. Then I can designer they call the node the same so we really can open a file that works on a Mac and just use the same file even with the send out node uh, on a PC and it works because it's something we're doing is a lot we, we work on a Mac but if we distribute the project we often use a PC for it So, did you manage? Did you manage to open this receiver? The ones that can download it. Then I go on that you, that we had just half and half an hour, so, so that we see some more stuff. So in Touch Designer, in Touch Designer, please just make a simple constant node top. In the tops, you choose a constant. Then you get just a color. And I change the color to something, to pink, whatever, doesn't matter. So this is the right? Sorry, this is a, I just sent this color or this picture yeah. to mm -hmm. Spout at the moment. We just do this little, little connection thing that you understand how to send something to the other program. And so. and then you need a, a node that is called, it's also in the tops, it's called Siphon Spout Out. Do you have it? So you just connect the constant to siphon spout out. Um, something that is later uh, relevant if you want to do proper mapping. You have a picture, a content picture, 
you have a resolution and uh, you, should, you should know your resolution later if you want to make it properly. We will not cover this in, 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 in depth anymore, but uh, that's, that's something that is uh, relevant and, and interesting to, to keep an eye on, the resolution. Uh, so, and then you send it to, to, you send it to the Siphon Spout out, and I change the color here. So, come on, just change it to blue. And what happens is I have a blue window now. And in the please copy folder, in the please copy folder that I gave you, so let's soften to here it is. So in the please copy folder, you have, you have one thing that's this uh, Pixel Pusher Blood Jam PC. Blood Jam was a project. Where, where uh, there was just project name from us, and it's not just for PC. It's it's working for Mac and PC. The only no, it's that's not true. It's this is the PC version. Sorry, this is the PC. Ah, this one. Uh, but here, I j I just explained what I did, like, in, in briefly. What I did here is the following. For the, okay, let's yeah, okay, let's. Do this. So what I did here is the following. <laughs> There was also an example, or there was also some files, how to address uh, the pixel pusher file. I will show this also in a bit. And what I did is I used instead of uh, I used this texture. I, I, I used this uh, this example you opened uh, before, this receiver example from uh, Siphon or and from Spout, and just combined these two scripts. Needs a bit of scripting, but then I just took the texture and sent out every line in the in the, uh, every pixel basically to the pixel pusher. So, but everybody has it included, so this is working. The only thing is, I never made it that nice that it's scale. Like I, I made I make this for I set this up for every project, and you see this here settings. Uh, when I set up the projects, I know how many LED bars and LEDs I have. So well, so I. That's what, what I said before about the resolution. I, I size the whole thing. Like the, 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 if I run this one, then you see it. So I run it. So, in, so, oops. okay. Well, okay, it's sticking somewhere up there. Anyhow, you see it's very small. You see it's very small because of course, I just put every pixel for the strip. Mm -hmm. And at the end, like even if you have a lot of pixels, it's not a, a big picture. At the end. No, the, this, the texture I sent to the. Imagine, imagine every line of pixels. Just imagine it this way: every line of pixels is is one LED strip. Yeah, that that's what it is. And I set this up. It can be 16 by 16 only as well. That it's just important to know because it's a really easy way to make it. Yeah without thinking about, because this is just running out of the box, the program, you just set this up. You can also make a bigger one and use just a part, but then you have to wire it right. But at the end, you just make this little, if you think about like, I make, let's, let's make a simple example in our heads. We have 10, uh, like this, 10 bars, half a meter long, and let's say there are 20 pixels in a bar, yeah? So we, how big is our picture that we sent? 20 by 10, very small, yeah? Because we just need to send this little texture and I would keep it also always small just to keep it as fast as possible at the end, yeah? But we sent this little picture and here I, for this project they had much, many, many, 160 meters of LEDs and, and, and higher density so it's a bigger picture. But at the end, uh, 
this is what I sent then there. Yeah? And, and this program does nothing else than going through every line, every pixel from the <coughs> texture and sending this out. First pixel, first LED. Second pixel, second LED. Every pixel, three channels, RGB. Yeah, this is how it works. Um, so you use it at the end like a screen. The whole translate, translation is done here with this. Yeah? And yeah, so if you want to just change it for yourself, you have to just change the size here. And now we go back. You have to figure it out yourself. Like we, can, we cannot do this in a short time. I just can give you the hints and what to consider how to make it. So, and, and if we think about the constant here, yeah, uh, here we have a size, and I send it to uh, 56 and uh, by 256. It's a bigger texture. So what is what is it doing? Maybe we put, a, maybe we just put a movie file in, and we see it. So we can just change it. So yeah. Ah. What? Ah, stupid, thank you. Uh, movie file in, okay, it's here. Yeah, makes more sense, the banana. So, okay. You, what, what do you see? It squeezes the picture. So, you just can't feed it in. <coughs> but if you want to address the lines correctly, you have to generate the picture right. Yeah, that's the point. So, what, what do you want to do? You, if before you make depend, different ways to make it, but you just say uh, custom resolution and scale it down, whatever. You just make sure that the picture gets there and you see what you get. This is the process, how to access it. And we just can try it, actually, together. So we will not have time that everybody tries it, so we do it together here so so you see it's already working because maybe at the end everybody comes here and we we have a look at the wiring as well so, so now, sorry, can just yes we can we can go slow and we can go slower as well <laughs> okay the set the setup Yep, maybe, okay, let's do it like this. Let's switch on the lights. Everybody comes here. I show you the setup that you see how it's set up. Sorry, I'm fast now that we oh, get good. more information. But, uh, <laughs> so. They brought extra everything here for everybody, but uh, so. How does it work? How does it work? So. This is our pixel pusher, right? We power it with USB. There are different ways to power it. You can power it directly from computer or just with uh, any USB plug. Yeah. Then uh, we cable from the outputs. Yeah. We cable the LEDs. So there are two ways. That's something I show you on the screen as well. We I show you there is a setup a setup file to set up the pixel pusher, the right strip and how many pixels are on the strips and, and these kind of things, right? And also you can set if, like if you power it with five volts, for example, that's the advantage of five volt strips, you can run it directly from here with no, no, uh, power. no power supply, yeah. but just a certain amount. That's cool to test, yeah? But what we do, we did, we create, like as every, that's also something we learned. So if you buy LEDs, they have already this plug on it. So we started to buy these plugs and made kind of adapter because we need this female, female, and then you can just plug it straight out of the box and connect it further. Yeah, that's the thing. And also we, we cut off the plus and minus and always wire them directly from the power supply. So. And on this one, you can put a lot of LEDs, yeah? That, that's the setup here. And uh, the computer? 
the computer, that's what I showed you before. So the computer is basically each, uh, so here, uh, <coughs> that's what's, co what's cool, it's a DHCP, the network you don't have to set with this kind of setting, it just understands it. You just plug it and, so wait. Yeah, but maybe you sit down again, but then, then you see the screen. So that's, that's, that's the setup, it's not more. N now we go again through the software steps, okay? So you can connect to uh, one, two, three, four, five more. Um, no, you can, you can actually, you can, look, I have more LDs here. And as the setup was made for something different, they continue. you can continue yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but just with five volt, like you can 480 LEDs in one line. 480. Of this? Yeah, 480 oh, line points, please. not of this. Okay. Right. So yeah, you but it's a massive amount. A lot of power, That's something you have to calculate. Yeah. That's if you show, look in a data sheet, uh, there it says how many amps it will have, and you calculate it up, and then you know. But uh, nothing happens if it's too weak, then you see like it's just not. Okay, so they there's can no light. Compromising signal, same color. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but they can control every pixel. We just yeah, have yeah, one yeah. color. Yeah, yeah we can control. Uh, your just we don't, didn't do this in the setup. And if you connect another one from behind, oh, then it can make it just extend it. Yes. Mm -hmm. so. Basically, okay, that's it. Um, so let's go back to the setup stuff. <coughs> so, what's nice to know about a pixel pusher? That's something you want to learn and you want to know. <laughs> so, uh, if you run this, uh, like you can make a program out of processing. That's what we do for production. We say file, uh, export, I think, yes, Windows or whatever. You can, can create this application. Then you have an exe file on Windows or a Mac executable. So you don't uh, have, then it just opens like this little window. That's everything that is running and that's, that's it. But if you're working on it, you want to have some more information. There is something that's really interesting if you open the file in processing, and that's this one. You see, especially if you have more pixel pushers, sometimes there's something connected wrong. Sometimes, uh, like especially if you have a, a, a circuit shortcut or something, then the pixel pusher will, like, you have to really make sure that everything is wired properly because otherwise you will see like one is going, coming, going, coming, going and, and this kind of things because there is no uh, fail safe on this kind of technology. And what you see, then you think about oh, which pixel pusher is it, whatever. Every pixel pusher has a MAC address and has an IP address automatically. And here we don't see anything because it's updating all the time the same. But if you have a lot, then it's running just through. And you can dump this text, and then you can see which one is missing. And if you know which hardware address it is, then you know where the problem is. If you <coughs> have a big setup, then you have to find out which one is, is, is making problems. Yeah. Also, uh, if you do a proper mapping, so I can also not go into the in the depth with that one, but for Prata Sauna, for example, we had, uh, oh, how many have been? We had many, many, many sticks. And we had about already 14 pixel pushers, so they already cost also a lot. Mm -hmm. But uh, we wanted, uh, like, uh, what we also did is, like, we had, like, different lengths. And what we started to pack the pixels, like, we made an a, a Excel sheet at the end where we did kind of a basic mapping, like, which direction, where does it start, and created, like, a table. and. And then we, 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 we took it out from uh, with Touch Designer, we, we organized it then on, 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 on the map. And then you send out, like, uh, on one output, you send then uh, three different bars. You address three different bars, but the content will be right. So we, we created everything with the textures in Touch Designer that we <coughs> created the mapping. Uh, Where did you connect 14? 14, 14. 14. Yeah, it's just one computer. It's no problem over the over the Ethernet. It's not a problem. If you use this technology, like as I show show it here, like you can get, go with sixty frames. It's no problem. Yeah, that's really cool to do. And if if you use this ArtNet bridge, for example, this uh, this other way, and I was trying a lot of ways how to 
create all the data for the ARPNET sending because also the ARPNET sending is very slow in, in, in touch designer, for example. It's just not, it, it, you generate so many values and stuff, it's just not an optimal format to accumulate. And I prepared it here on another file. We'll jump in this uh, for a moment as well, that you see the other way as well. So, but basically, let's finish the, the pixel push-up is the most interesting part for you if you want to use it. Yeah. So, you have this file from me, you just have to adapt it a bit, uh, and, and it's ready to go, kind of. Yes? Small question. So, the software of the pixel pusher, that's actually just a bridge between the touch designer and the uh, hardware. And, yes. Not so the power, the, the hardware, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Because you could, you could if, if, you're, if you're good in programming, yeah, then you could write, you can have a look at the Java code and translate it in, in C Sharp or something else and create the proper DLL. I would be really happy if somebody does it. <laughs> yeah? Because then we don't, all, we don't need this, uh, all, in all of them. But this is a way that works with high frame rates. So I'm happy so far that it works like this. Yeah? And I didn't have to code a lot, a lot of time. I was working with like two hours or three hours to put this stuff together. Now, not to solve the whole things, but to combine these two things. Uh, and I also saw there is now a Python, uh, a Python project from them as well. I'm just not so sure how great it is, like I love Python, but how great it is to, 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 to push such a lot of data with Python through every frame in touch design. I, I guess it's, it's mm -hmm. also a bottleneck at the end. Better to have a separate application running on a, on a different task and you just share it over the graphic card. So you separate it and I think it's faster. Yeah. Okay. So, pixel pusher. Let's go back to pixel pusher. Um, oh, well, where have you, where do you have it? So, so if it's too fast, please tell me, and I will slow down. Um, so, you saw that there is an USB stick on the pixel pusher, like yeah, and there is a set. There's just a little. That can be a really small. Uh, 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 stick and there is the setup for the pixel pusher. There's a kind of a standard setup, so with the LPD 8806, it's working out of the box. But uh, you want to set some stuff. Yeah, you want to set some stuff. That means first you can group pixel pushers. So there is a document I included the link also in my list, like here in the. Here is the, the getting started, and the, the, here is the whole documentation about what's possible to set. Yeah, but oops, sorry. So, so, but on this in this file, so we set first the group. That means I can have different groups of pixel pushers, like maybe different installations controlled from one, one computer. Then I have controller ID means what? Like if I have first group, one, two, three, next group. One, two, three. So I have sub-networks that I can address. That's more for us that we can figure out where they are. And also, if you do Java, you can address them separately. Not so important for us. What's important is uh, how many strips are attached because this will have effect on the, how much data is sent over the LED bus. So that means if we have a lot of pixels to drive and if you don't use the pixel pusher right, that means if you send always 3,840 pixels out, of course there's a lot of network traf traffic. And if you just use always on every output just a couple of pixels, then if you set it, then you just cut it down by 10 or something. Just if you set, like it will work differently uh, as well, but uh, it makes more sense to make it properly. And that means you would say how many strips are attached, how many pixels are on each strip, and you can also say like if it's if it's blanking, then uh, I, I, if there is nothing, it goes to black. Otherwise, it keeps the value. Then I have strip one is this chip, strip two, and so on. And here we see the Chinese problem I told you before, GRB. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, if you don't do it, you can also switch the colors in touch designer. Also possible, but. Uh, if you set it up properly, then you can connect it to an another system and it's working. Yeah. This is what you have to set up basically uh, in this pixel RC file. There are more options, 
but this is like the, the basic setup. It can also it can also have fixed IP addresses and so on and so on. Yeah. I can also attach you one of these files to the mail if you want. Uh, so, but let's let's go back to what we started with for the last minutes. So, and we talked first about USB. So uh, about uh, DMX and USB <coughs> and these kind of things. And that's actually how I want to start with how I want to start with you to give you a. A more nice uh, start, not too complex. Now we made the complex part first. Um, so I just plugged in the DMX thingy and USB. It's just mostly some troubles with it. And so does it do it or not? I play. So uh, it's black. No, now it's doing nothing, right? So, so this one is a bit damaged because of the USB port. Uh. So, now it's not working, of course. So, okay. You just imagine that it's working. Here is this is very old, and the DMX. Uh, the DMX USB port is, 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 is fucked up already. But if you just want to send some DMX, uh, DMX signals, if you just go back to the simple fixtures this is as a starting point. I made again a constant to start yeah, and used three channels, RGB, just to generate some kind of data. And then I used a math and used the range function. That's very helpful. That's a function. It's one of my most used functions if you work with lights to convert the data. And here I set the range from zero, uh, from zero to one. I want to have from zero to two <coughs> to five. That means here I just get, of course, you could put in here, but if I do a test setup, I can put in here 255, but it's fucking annoying. So I put a little bit as it is, zero and one, and mm -hmm. I just convert convert it to zero to two fifty five. And what I generate then is values, and this is sending out. That's it. So if we are lucky, we manage to. Uh, yeah. So I have to solder a new a new plug there. Okay, but this is how it works. That, that's, that's exactly what you have to do. You just put in these uh, channels, values from 0 to 255, and the light is com coming out. Yeah? So, the next, next one, the next one, the Artnet. Yeah, and here is the one from DMX for All, not my friend in Touch Designer, because here it's always a bit tricky. But other nodes are working better. I know it because I used it. Also, the Entech node is working like a charm, the, the Artnet node. And also, this, this, this DMX for all node is also working if I use MadMapper or something. It, I just have a problem with addressing it with a sign. I, I'm not sure where the problem really lies. Yeah. It's, it's not damaged, it's just uh, so, something they don't understand each other so well. So, but it, there, should be no, there should be no difference because it's just Ethernet, so I don't get it. It's somewhere in the addressing. Um, but here, the same. I generated some values, and then you use also the, the DMX out node. And then instead of using uh, NTEC USB Pro, you use Artnet. <coughs> and if you use Artnet, then you have some more settings here, net, subnet, and universe. So universe we know already, that's this one line, and in the basic thing you have 16 universes you can run through. And with net and subnet you can address up to this 32,000. Uh, so if you, ha you have to set, uh, normally this should be 
this would be a zero, zero, I think this is one actually, but, uh, and then it should send out. So if you have an, 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 an artnet node, then you set these things and there's also somewhere in documentation how to address them. And then it sends out. And if you have a network address, this is broadcast. That means sends out on every network address that's possible. Simic rate as well, actually, depends what you have running in the network. If you just run this, everybody knows. But on the other side, sometimes it's, interest, uh, it's, it's better and, and, and more intelligent to send it just to the right address and make a unicast instead of a broadcast. But broadcast works mostly out of the box, just to make it. That's how to make Artnet. That's also very simple at the end. Um, so, and SACN, that's the one I managed, I never used. It's also as simple as before, but smarter to send. And you just use SACN, but you need uh, another device to accept it. I don't have one. So, th this is the basics here. And so, if you want to, if you want to send a picture, like we saw already, if we want to send more complex stuff like a texture or something to uh, Pixel Pusher, then it's not a big deal. As we saw before, putting the texture, sending to, to Spout, reading it and sending it out, basically. The rest is, a, is, is an issue of wiring and setting the texture right that you get the stuff you want. Um, because if you, if you set the texture, like if you create the texture, like as the example we had before, the 10, to tw uh, 10 bars with 20 pixels, if we create the, pixel, the, the picture in touch designer right, and we set up the pixel pushers right, that we have always 20 pixels for every output, then we of course need for, for 10, we need two of the pixel pushers, but then we have the texture and every line, every pixel that we can generate is uh, one by one by one, transfer to the MD uh, strip. So you have a picture and then just send it out and you get also the lines again and the picture is on the LED matrix. Very simple. And you can do this, you can do something similar. There is, uh, here is, uh, so if we have uh, maybe movie file, well, sorry, so movie file in and there is in the jobs, there is top two. You know that one? Yeah, if you use this, so if you use this, then it translates your picture into channels. And what we have here, so we can also, we can switch this from zero to one to zero to 255. Remember 255 is the magic number with DMX. So, and now we have values that we can send again to the send again to the DMX out, and then it sends out the values. It's it's not completely true because we have to uh, think about the orders and all these things. But the the starting point for you is if you want to work with this, have a look at the uh, top to chop, and just get the pixels right and send it. Uh, to the DMX <coughs> out. This is it. So, DMX out. So, this will not make a proper picture at the moment, I guess, because uh, of the organization of the pixels, how, how, how it is reading it. Uh, and we have to set up a bit and have testing, test setup to see it. But at the end, this is also translating the picture to values and sends it out. Also, what I had, that's something I have to say, yeah? If you have a bigger picture, then you have the problem that you have more channels and the DMX out node is not so intelligent that it sends uh, more than one universe. That means it sends, like, if you have a pic uh, picture, this in these are thousands of pixels, of course. And then you send uh, just uh, the first uh, 512 values and then the rest is lost. So you have to create the setup where you cut <coughs> parts of the picture or cut the table or wherever, like uh, <coughs> using chops or using tops before, whatever. Yes? And if I have a um, matrix of LED and I want to see my matrix the banana, yeah. uh, what is the way? 
Yeah, that's what, I, what, I'm, what I'm telling you. That the way is, basically, we are talking about DMX now, or what are we talking about? DMX or, or, or LED pixels? Uh, DMX. DMX, yes. So, this is your banana. <coughs> yeah? So, I, I don't have it in my mind exactly how to set it now. I have to find a file, or you have to figure it out yourself. But you have this node, and this is at the top to chop. This node goes through all the pixels, and here you see the banana actually. This is the banana, what we see here in the color values. Yeah? So it goes through, through this, and there's black because there's nothing, 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 and then there's the banana starting. But I guess there are issues, if I remember it right, it's reading the picture, pic, pic, uh, picture in it, not from here, it's reading it from here and in another direction and these kind of things. So, Always a lot of uh, I, um, possibilities to change this. One is turning the texture and mirror and flipping the texture. Other ways uh, sorting sorting the the chop right. Another problem is, and that's that's what I said just before. If you have a DMX out, especially if you go with USB. Ah, now it's coming. Great. So. It is working. Yeah, it's, now it's USB is running again. So, so, oops. Ah, ah, Lutzen. So, yeah. So, but now, now you see, you see the problem actually. It should be blue. It's pink because. Yes, <laughs> because the ordering the ordering is wrong here. So we have to work on this on on, on this uh, uh, chop to get it in the right order. Okay, but that's something to figure out with a bit of trying. Um, yeah, and then it sends out. And then you have to to cut it. I also wrote some scripts to organize it. To, to cut always 255 values and then a new universe and I generated with Python, I generated uh, dynamic DMX outputs like I, I took the picture and then you can generate the nodes but that's a setup question, yeah, question? Yeah. So we have a really similar setup, like we have to uh, classify the generating the picture that we send to the and we're processing to flash uh, and uh, what like you said, it's Actually, I never used 24 volts. I see. But, but uh, I think a lot of chips are able to use 24 volts. The VS chips are should be. And oh, okay. Yeah. 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 No, I have no experience with this. But I just know uh, I will switch next time because we had a lot of problems with the 5 volt things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Like we bit, built crazy big installations with yeah. this, but you have to make everywhere this big net uh, uh, power uh, parts uh, and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. The power. So uh, another one. Can you run like a three D mapping of the pixels in Tatsutana? Yes, we did this, but this is a bit uh, a bigger excursion actually. Yeah. I wanted to show you this as well, uh, but. Uh, but it's not, not so easy to explain, and, and that it's, it's complicated at the end. It's not easy, because yeah. it, star it starts for us, it's like we did different ways to make something like this. It starts basically by a clean concept of what you want and how to organize the LEDs. It's not just to fix it here, and then it, for us it starts often like even, uh, because we do another part that we also didn't do now, because it was no time. Uh, we generate often textures and the FBX model of, uh, uh, of, the, yeah. of the nightclub, for example, yeah. using textures, loading what we generate here into this so we can have a look of the whole installation before we are there. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we did in Cinema 4D before and it was like, uh, yeah, it was okay to do it, but now we do everything in here. But this is another yeah. one hour of <laughs> quick run through. Yeah, but this is helpful. But the most important thing is that you know, like, I can show you something. I, I show you one hint uh, how we do it, actually. I have it here because, so I try to see it. So, project stuff. So, it's 
number style. So often we create actually routing tables. That's something we do. Yeah. And let's see. Let's see. There is not a lot inside. Oh yeah. Yeah, this, this, these are some calculations from us beforehand often, actually. <coughs> which pixel pusher, which universe, which channels, and how many pixels, and how to accumulate all the stuff to, to pack the things. And, but what we do, this is like the, the Prata Sauna Club that I showed you in the video briefly, where we stopped it. But, uh, so different lengths are different colors. So for, for us, first to see uh, what we are doing. Then the plus are the ones that are flipped, like in the third dimension. Yeah. yeah. And then you have running these ones in this direction, the other ones in the other direction. So this is like we make a simplified layout of the whole thing. Yeah. This is also at the end, if you if you if you see it, you can separate the picture in three textures, one in this direction, one in this and one this. Yeah. It's 2D. It's 2D. We have to make it 2D, otherwise I don't know how to make it. And then uh, of course, if you th then if you run through it, like uh, we have, uh, depends where we design it, export it, or make it by hand. We know the pixel, and we have also have a direction. We know that we start always from left to right, right to left, whatever. Yeah. Has to have to have a logic. Yeah. And if you have the logic, uh, and and uh, then you run an animation over this texture, and of course, then it runs through all the, yeah. the shop. Yes. And of if I just wanna 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 uh, run it through the, the ones that are coming down, and if I lay them flat, then I get an, and and just it's just let's say a, a, a gradient that is yeah. moving. Then it starts to get the first one is coming down, next one is coming down, next one is coming down. Uh, this is how it works. Yeah. And but this is n this is it's not so hard to program. It's it's about the conception of the whole thing and and to how to build up the thing. But if you have this. Uh, and yeah, if you, if you have it like this, then this is the texture for your 3D model. This is, uh, and and also this gives you the flexibility to play whatever you want in a complex space. Actually, I, I I did I did also this. You can also have an SVG or object or something. Yeah. Then you could use a line. And take a line, uh, separate the line or the yeah. texture. Read like I have. It's also yeah, something I want to show. I want to show you actually. Yeah. You can get like x points on the line. Uh, that's what I did with the DMX setup before. But I had the bottleneck somewhere else. This was very smooth then. But the problem was I, I want to send it out differently anyways. So for me, a texture is fine if I know how to read the stuff. <coughs> and, but here also the question. Yeah, it's always a question. How? Where do you implement it? Because you can also implement this in the processing it uh, in processing yeah, again. Yeah, that you just read. Actually, what I would do is I would use this all in quasi uh, touch designer to, to build up the whole setup and simulation and everything. But then I would have like the CSV file uh, that is uh, loaded once as well in touch designer as well as in processing. And there I just pick the stuff and, and read it out of the texture and then. But we we, get, we went even a step further. We did this in touch designer. We we cut out all these things. I think even with the lines, mm -hmm. then we packed it into smaller lines. It means like we we, we filled up the, the lines. We have like 480 pixels. Mm -hmm. So we started to think like which one is like first. Where do you build it in the space? So which are a group? And then you start like half a meter, meter. With this goes in one. Then stack it together, color coded with the text, <coughs> the test image. Then you put it in space and you see, like, do they work? But we had a lot of problems as well. If you have somewhere a mistake in the whole thing, then you see it's just moved in the space. And it's getting really, really headache and, and fixing these in, in reality then. If you have time, it's great and it works. But uh, it's not out of the box. More questions? In my email, yes. So, uh, where is it? Sublime text. So, 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 so. Okay, let let's stop uh, and.
let's make write me an email or uh, catch me today or tomorrow and we can talk about if you have some issues. So just send your request and you will send Just send me that you're part of the workshop that I know who is <laughs> sending me an email and I will send you this file and maybe some other things. I collect all the all the addresses and then I send you the links and these kind of things. Okay. Thanks for listening.